Welcome to a new episode of the Books Review Podcast by Dreamers Jotter. Today, I review the book The Language Instinct, written by Steven Pinker. What does linguistics mean? Earlier, I used to think it was a study of the evolution of grammar and vocabulary in a particular language. But it is only partially true. It deals not just with a specific language, but any language in general. Steven Pinker, an experimental psychologist, psycholinguist, public intellectual, and popular science author, digs deep into the most fundamental questions of language. What is a language? How did we develop it? Do we have a language gene? Who sets the rules for a language, say English? The profundity of the explanations to these questions will blow your mind. Language, especially if it is not your mother tongue, feels like a set of rules and regulations you should learn by rote in school. So does that mean language is some skill that is completely alien to us when we are born, and we only obtain it from our surroundings? No. Humans have some basic structure of grammar, called universal grammar by Pinker, stored in the brain. Note that this grammar is not related to any specific language. All languages that humans speak have a basic syntax. Pinker debunks a common myth that language affects human thought in one of the initial chapters. By substantiating with solid reasoning, logic, and evidence, He never beats around the bush in criticizing false theories and their proponents. For example, there is a popular myth that Eskimos have 400 words for snow, because snow is such an important part of their lives. He rebuts this statement, and concludes that such hoaxes are attempts by a few people who exaggerate the count by each retelling, only to capture people's attention to the exoticness of unknown cultures. So, what is grammar? Starting with grammar, various subdisciplines of linguistics are discussed in the book. Syntax, or grammar, is a discrete combinatorial system. You have a bunch of small sets of words, which are discrete, and combine them in various forms to form meaningful sentences. You can put, theoretically, infinitely many sets. Hence, you can form infinitely long and infinitely many sentences. But you must follow some rules while fusing two sets. For instance, in English, the order of subject, object, and verb is S, V, and O. In Hindi, Telugu, and most other Indian languages, it is S, O, and V. There are many such rules for any given language, and Pinker argues that humans are very well programmed to understand these rules easily. Imagine a baby listens to and can say these two sentences. John ate a banana. Ron peeled an apple. Then, the baby would likely say, John, peeled, a banana, rather than, John, a banana, peeled. Okay. What about the words, you may ask? Humans have an incredible capacity to memorize words. According to a research study cited in the book, an average American high school student knows about 60,000 words. But you don't have to remember the meaning of each word. A lot of words are compounds of some basic words that are called listums, in linguistics. Some examples are great-great-grandmother and anti, anti-missile, missile. Also, we try to derive nouns from verbs and vice versa. For instance, you can easily guess that the action word of educate, is education. Pinker starts the latter half of the book by discussing neurology. Starting with what a neuron is, he explores various theories on how our brain processes various forms of language, spoken, written, and signed. Even more interesting are the chapters regarding genetics, where he investigates whether we have any language genes. Is there any gene that can be turned off, rendering us incapable of understanding anything anymore? What do you think? Pinker's erudition is evident in his attempt to elucidate such complicated topics lucidly, to even a layperson like me. You might have heard some rules in English like never end a sentence with a preposition, I used to wonder who comes up with such hard-to-follow restrictions. Many unnecessary debates like who versus whom, are futile. Because, they no longer make sense in modern English. Our brain tries to figure out rules from a huge dataset of millions of sentences you have heard in your life. Therefore, the prescriptive rules, prescribing how one has to talk, instead of how one does talk, have no practical use in communication. Turns out, Language mavens, as Pinker sarcastically refers to some so-called language experts, publish such nonsense rules to gain publicity, and outsell their rivals by publishing standard English reference books with more and more rules. He minces no words in calling them out for their utter ignorance of the modern science of language. This chapter is very much fun. Pinker tries to convince his readers that this language instinct is an innate quality and not something we learn from the environment from scratch. He believes there are similar inbuilt mental modules, probably controlling human nature, which may have been discussed in depth in his subsequent books. Does the child of an immigrant speak in their parents' accent, or, their peers? Why does English have silent letters? 
If the past tense of cast is cast, what is the past tense of broadcast? Broadcast, or, broadcasted? If you are excited to know the answers to questions like these, this book would be a delight to your mind, and a valuable addition to your non-fiction shelf. For more reviews and other articles, log on to Dreamers Jotter website. Check the description. Thank you for listening. Bye.